And that takes me to the next point. I wanted to talk a little bit about spiritual darkness. Without getting into it too much, my own personal experience, I'm going through a very, 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 very tough time right now. And that's about all I'm going to say about that. You know, a, a large part of that tough time is a spiritual darkness that's been going on progressively for several months. And it's been really hitting me hard past month or two. I considered maybe doing a separate blog about that. You know, just to, sh ju just to share my experiences, what I'm feeling, what I'm doing about it, what I'm thinking. And then I thought, you know what? Once I do that, I'm not sitting quietly in the dark. And God sends us through these deserts, through this, this darkness, because he wants us to sit quietly in the dark and learn from it. The way that happens is different for everybody. But I'm seeing a lot of this, you know, people going through rough spiritual patches and stuff. And I did want to offer a couple of words of ad advice. I'm there with you. I'm in my own spiritual darkness. I think, and I, I've heard priests throw around, not just to me, but to others, throw around the term, you know, dark night of the soul. They, they throw it around a lot. I wish they wouldn't because it diminishes the importance and the, the uh, it diminishes the weight of what that really is. You know, yeah, I'm angry at God lately. Well, you know, it's a dark night of the soul. You know, John of the Cross talked about it. No, that's not, that's, that's not what that is. The dark night of the soul is something very different. And I do believe that just generically spiritual darkness or spiritual dryness does have degrees. God will allow a, a Christian to experience that. As much as, as much of that pain as you can handle, he'll let you experience that much. There's a, there's, a, there's a much more intelligent way of putting that, but it escapes me. So it does come in degrees. If you're able to handle it at all, he may bring you through spiritual dark or spiritual desolation to a small degree for a short period of time, and then he'll bring you out of it, and you'll experience spiritual consolation. It's, a, it's, a, it's an ongoing cycle of ups and downs. The more spiritually mature you are, the more he wants you to suffer for whatever reason, to purify you, to punish you, to purge you, I don't, I don't whatever, everybody's different. The, the more spiritually mature you are, the more capable you are of suffering, the deeper the darkness will be that he brings you through and the longer it will last. So how do you deal with that? What do you do when you're going through these periods of spiritual desolation or spiritual darkness or spiritual dryness? I have a couple of articles written on my website. On this episode's on-demand page, I will put links to those articles because I don't remember what, they, what I called them. I think there's three of them. Uh, I'll put links to those articles on this episode's on-demand page. Um, but I can tell you briefly, first thing you do is hold the line. And I know that that can be very hard to do. That can be, very, because depending on where you are, you might be where, where, where I am, where I am, and I'm being very honest, I'm very irritated right now, very frustrated, very, frankly, very angry at God right now. I'm not going to lie. But, I know that's my, that's my defect. I'm angry at God because of me. Why because of me? I have no idea, but I know that God is good. He sent his son to die for me and so on and so on. So the problem must be me. But the way it feels is that I'm angry at God right now. When you have this sort of angst, anger, frustration, feeling betrayed by God, whatever. It's hard to hold the line. So damn hard. So, so hard. Believe me, I'm there. So hard. Pray, 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 pray. And in my heart, I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Either because I don't want to or because it's hard to. You know, prayer is a response to grace. Prayer is not just, you know, do you want butter on your toast or do you want jelly? That's not prayer. Prayer is a response to grace. That's Prayer is more like, do you want to go to the gym or not? And then once you're in the gym, do you want to do legs <laughs> or shoulders? And then once you choose which, ex, which workout set you want to do, do you want to lift light or do you want to lift heavy? That's prayer. All of that is prayer. Prayer is hard to do. So it's hard to, toe the, it's hard to hold the line when you're going through spiritual dryness. It's hard, but you have to. Don't listen to your heart in those moments. Listen to your head. Your head knows, even if your heart resists, 
Or for you, it might be reversed. Maybe your mind resists, but your heart knows. Whichever one of those <laughs> is tugging you toward the good, follow that one and ignore the other one. And it's going to be sometimes painful or difficult or a drag, whatever. But that's number one. Hold the line. Hold the line. But I don't feel God's presence when I pray. So what? Neither do I. My goodness. Last time I, last time I quote unquote, felt my prayer, uh, it's got to be a couple months ago, a few months ago. And it was rather brief. And that was the first time in a few months before that. And that was the first time, maybe in a year. I don't know. I mean, I don't feel God when I pray. So what? You do it anyway. Because you need that lifeline. And these moments of spiritual dryness won't last forever. And sometimes after God brings you through it, or sometimes while you're still going through it, he may let you feel his presence during your prayer. It may be very brief. It may be momentary, but it will be significant. You understand? It will be, it, it'll be worth the wait. It'll be significant. So hold the line, especially when it comes to prayer. Certainly when it comes to the practice of the faith. I don't feel like going to Mass on Sunday. Tough. Get your ass up and go to Mass. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry to be the spiritual daddy, you know, very direct and stuff, but get your ass up and go to Mass. I don't feel like it. So you have to be there. God calls us to be there. Be there. Because if you think you're going to get better by skipping Mass, <laughs> no, you won't. You're going to get worse. And this is part of the trial. This is part of the trial. Will you hold the line? Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Or, like Peter, if you're attentive to the storm, focus and attention, if you're attentive to the storm, if you're focusing on the wind, you'll sink. God knows if you're going to sink or stand. He knows. He's testing you, but not because he doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't need to test you. He needs you to know. He needs you to know who you really are. My friends, that is a hard lesson to learn. First, because of our pride, because of our ego, because of our arrogance, because of our vanity. Hard lesson, hard as in it's difficult to get there to the lesson. But it's also hard because you'll probably not like what you learn once you do get there. Mm. So, God puts us, sends, takes us through these trials not to prove who you are to himself, but to prove who you are to you. Mm. It's tough. It's tough. You think Luke Skywalker had it bad being trained by Yoda over there in, what was that, Endor? I don't remember where he went. It wasn't indoor. Anyway, this is much harder. Much, much harder. Number one, hold the line. Pray. Practice the faith. And number two, and I don't know how to explain this. This will probably be the last point I make on this. I don't know how to explain this, but you take it and apply it yourself. Learn from the darkness. Learn from the darkness. Learn from the darkness. The de God will probably allow the devil to vex you psychologically or maybe emotionally. And it will manifest in the darkness. It will manifest, not in, in a dark room. I'm talking about interiorly. It will, that vexation will manifest in the darkness. And then it's game time. You're playing with the big boys. Why? Because the devil... Or it might not, the Lord may not use the devil to do this through vexation. The Lord may do this by an unseen grace that enlightens your mind to see something he wants to teach you. Could, could happen that way too. But sometimes he allows the devil to vex you, right? Then you're playing with the big boys because now you have to discern how much of this vexation, or if it's not vexation, how much of this 
spiritual enlightenment is the truth and how much how much of it is my error of perception the, the lord will bring you there the lord is not going to lead you through the dark just to get you lost okay if you're experiencing spiritual darkness god allows it and he doesn't allow it just so that he can get you lost or worse off than where you were but learn from the darkness and suffer through the darkness Part of the fruit of spiritual desolation, if you can believe it, is the fruit of the suffering, the fruit that results from the suffering. So suffer well and suffer honestly. Again, I can't explain that. I probably could, but it would take like 20 hours. I say that to you and you apply it as you know how it applies to yourself. Spiritual desolation, the spiritual dryness. First of all, I, I want to say too, I do believe a lot of people are experiencing this these days. Um, I, I've been in evangelization and, and stuff for a very long time. So just in my experience, I feel like over the past, let's just say five years, I feel like a lot of people, by comparison to, you know, past experiences, a lot of people are going through this. I also think people are experiencing a lot of depression. I mean, throughout, <laughs> throughout America, certainly depression is really on the rise. So if all of these, let's take it just to Catholics, of all these Catholics who are expressing a sense of spiritual darkness, I do think a lot of them are just depressed. I believe that because of some of the things they say are clues to what they are and are not really experiencing. Some of the things that they express are clues. I do believe a lot of them are experiencing just ordinary old depression. But I also think many of them, very many of them, are going are being brought through spiritual darkness. If you think you're going through spiritual darkness, ask yourself if you're experiencing if you're just experiencing depression. Talk to a spiritual director. Cuz it may I I would say at least for half half of the people I've I've come to know going through this online and 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 in real life, half of them I think are just depressed. And half of them I think are at least half of them are at least going at least half of them are going through a sort of spiritual darkness. So hold the line. Hope in God. The only time you have to worry is when you stop giving a damn. And if you're suffering in the spiritual darkness, it's not because you don't give a damn. If, when you don't give a damn, you know, you're no longer suffering in the dark. You're at home in it. You care. You give a damn. You want to be closer to God. You're frustrated that he's not responding to you, he's not sending you consolations, whatever. And that means you care, or, or it could mean you're selfish. But I think for most of you, it's because you care. And you can only care about reaching for God if God is with you. Well, I don't feel him with me, but you want to, right? You can only have that desire, desire if God is with you. I think St. Teresa of Avila said that. That's not me. I think that's Teresa of Avila. Or it's me, and I'm a genius, but I don't think so. <laughs> Teresa of Avila, I think, has gone through this. Mother Teresa has gone through this. Um, St. John of the Cross. Many other saints. I can tell you, the, the, the cycle of desolation and consolation, spiritual desolation and spiritual consolation, that cycle is kind of normal, just as breathing is normal, right? Um, what, what the severity is, is the severity will, will differ. But the cycle, really, to anyone who's trying to be holy, for anyone who's trying to be a better Christian Catholic, that cycle is normal. The depths, okay, a deep desolation, that is not, that's usually more of the exception. That's usually more of the exception. Anyway, I will leave an, a link to this ep, on this episode's On Demand page talking about this, uh, or, or links to articles I wrote talking about this. Hopefully they give you some advice.